this video, I'm going to go over some of the questions from the quiz you guys took in class today, since we had a short in class and didn't get a chance to review some of these together. All right. So uh, let's start with the first one. All right. So this is talking about uh, which of these is going to describe the sampling method that the company used. All right. And it looks like they have a representative setting up a booth at a grocery store in the city. And the representative asks people with toddlers who walk past the booth to complete the survey. So this is not random at all. Um, this is just uh, convenient in the sense that they'll go to a grocery store where uh, people with children will tend to go from time to time to buy groceries. Uh, so the answer for number one is going to be convenient sampling. Remember, if it's going to be systematic, it has to say something like every 16th customer gets asked. Simple random sample, they probably have to get... Uh, you know, a number for every person in the store and then randomly choose a certain amount of those. Cluster sampling, that's to separate the customers into groups somehow and then uh, choose randomly some groups and ask everybody in those groups. And then stratify would be separating again uh, by homogenous groups, so a characteristic that makes the groups the same, and then uh, sampling a little bit from each of those groups. So none of that's happening here. Uh, this is convenience. Number two. Uh, this is talking about uh, blocking, and so I'm, uh, I had a student actually in class ask uh, what a block is, so I'm glad we're going over this now. Hopefully you're watching this video before the test. Uh, and so blocking is when you separate your, in this case, this is people, but separate your experimental units based on a characteristic. And when we do that, we want the blocks to be as similar, the people in the blocks or the experimental units in those blocks to be as similar to each other in some way as possible. So in this case, we're talking about comparing two uh, sunscreens, essentially. We want the people separated in these blocks. So we want each of the people in each of the blocks to be as similar to the other people in their respective blocks in terms of how quickly they get sunburned as possible. So I know it can be kind of confusing, but ultimately you want to uh, kind of separate out that variability so you can hone in on if the uh, the new lotions are actually protecting people from sunburn or not. So uh, it's really come, hopefully coming down to D or E, and you want the people to be as similar as possible in each block with respect to uh, what you care about, which is how easily they get sunburn. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Okay. Now, we all did actually pretty well on number three, so I'm going to skip that. Again, if you did miss number three, the idea is it's every 25th box. That should be the dead giveaway for that systematic. Number four. All right, so number four, uh, in this one, they're saying they're creating a list at the end of the year of every single item that's in stock. The moment they say every single item, they're talking about a census because they're looking at everything in the store. They're not sampling. That would be just some of them. An experiment would be have to randomly assign a treatment, and there's no random assignment of treatments happening in number four. Now, five and six we actually did well on. I'll just quickly uh, make sure we understand here uh, which of the following best describes why it's a completely randomized design. Uh, that's because there is no blocking variable. They're not separating these workers uh, in any way, you know, they're not separated based on like the work that they do or like the time of day of their shift. Like this is just, they're just randomly assigning them. And the workers were randomly assigned to the workers, or excuse me, the extent of plans were randomly assigned to the workers. So A for number five. Okay, number six, again, we did well on this. I'll just quickly go over it though. Uh, cause and effect relationship. If you're trying to show or prove cause and effect, you must have a, an experiment. Okay, now the last four, we definitely need to go over. Um, I chose this one knowing we'd probably struggle with this. Um, this idea of confounding is, is tough to understand. So the idea here of there's something going on in this uh, procedure for this experiment that could impact the results that doesn't need to happen in this way. And so the idea here is that the lab technician being randomly assigned to the different uh, levels or the different dosages of these strains um, the, the simplest thing to do is to use the same technician for all of these uh, different doses and strains. Right? By doing that, you eliminate any issues with maybe the technicians make any, some mistakes. So the idea of randomly assigning the lab technician is the confounding variable. 
Okay, number eight. Which of the following is true? Uh, for the response variable, we actually are caring about how, uh, it's not the temperature, right? Those are the treatments. The response variable is essentially how the lamb is cooked, whether I guess assume medium, medium rare, uh, well done, things like that. Uh, if you ex repeat the experiment, I, you can never really expect identical results. I'd expect similar results, but not identical. That would mean exactly the same. Uh, control group here doesn't really make sense. I don't think I want to have, compare this to like a raw cut of lamb. So I don't need to worry about that one. Uh, ultimately here, it comes down to that by having those two cuts roasted at each time temperature combo, this is an example of replication. Number nine, uh, this one, uh, best, which one best describes the manager's study? Uh, I should have looked real quick at the uh, most wrong answer. I'm guessing it has to do with like blocking. Um, the idea of match pairs, that would mean you would have to like only look at two towels um, at a time. You'd pair up the towels in some way and they're not, right? They're just, they grab a towel, they flip a coin, however it lands, that's how they determine detergent A or detergent B, and then they move forward. So this is just a completely randomized design. If it was a block design, they would have to separate the towels in some way. The, deter the detergents are not the blocks, the detergents are the treatments. And then observational study, no, because we are randomly assigning a treatment or randomly assigning a detergent. So that's why it's uh, a, an experiment, not a study. Okay, the last one. Okay, preferable to use stratified sampling, the random sampling. The, so the idea here, kind of similar to what I said about the blocking, when you do stratified sampling, you're hoping to separate your groups into homogenous groups. It has nothing to do with size. So I know the uh, a couple of these talk about like if you have a large or small amount. No, it's all about can you separate them into strata or groups that are homogenous or alike in some way. So I would say C because you can divide the strata so that the individuals in each stratum are as much alike as possible. Similar to blocking, we separate in our experiments with blocking. Uh, if we're going to use that with experiments, we separate uh, our experimental units based on something that makes the blocks within each block is everything is alike. Same with the strata. Okay, that's it for this. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch this. Good luck on the test.